you are living the fan fiction dream right now and looking back on this journey is there anything you would have done or written differently um i think no because i think it probably wouldn't have ended up the same way um but there are obviously some things and after you know seven years later that just from my point of view of like learning more about um, the responsibility and the audience and stuff, I would probably soften a couple of those things in the book. Um, but I don't think I would change anything about how I've done anything because I have literally, like I'm living the fan fiction dream life. Like I'm pretty sure I read a fan fiction that had the same thing happen. Um, so I don't think I would change much, but um, I think I would take out a couple things that I just am kind of grossed out by of Pardon's behavior from seven years ago. <laughs> yeah, so that brings me to my next question. As you said, there have been some concerns over his character and people actually define him as being abusive towards Tessa. So do you agree with that? Yes and no. Um, first, I think when you read something or watch something, you're allowed to have whatever opinion you have. So if someone tells me they believe he's abusive, it's not really my place to say, no, he's not. Um, if that's how they feel, that's how they feel. And they're allowed to have that. I just would also say from my point of view is a lot of the people that say that haven't actually read the books, which is really frustrating because the whole topic, especially toward the end of the fourth book, is they know that they have a really dysfunctional relationship and they know that it's not working and they're both miserable and they can't figure out how to make it work. So then they separate and he's in therapy and he goes to AA and he gets sober. So it's like, I definitely don't um, approve of his behavior or hers. She's not perfect either. I don't approve of the things they do. And when I was writing and when I continue to write in the future, I'm not writing like what I think relationships should be like. I'm just writing what most of them actually are like. You know, a lot of people hurt each other and hurt people that they love and they don't mean to or they don't even know how to actually treat people. Like if Hardin was a real person, he really does have a lot of trauma. Um, and I think because I can relate to that, I get a little defensive when people are like, he's a, this and that. And it's like, yeah, but you know, nobody's perfect. And I'm pretty sure that all of us have hurt people that we love. And at the end of the day, Hardin hurts himself so much more than everyone else around him. So for me, I'm just like, if you haven't read the books, then I don't like your opinion doesn't matter to me. But if you've read the books and you want to have a real conversation about the like toxicness of their relationship, I'm all for it. Um, but most of the time, the abusive and the, those kinds of words come from people who never read the whole books, which is beyond frustrating. So after has been compared a lot to Fifty Shades of Grey, and there was an interview with Dakota Johnson where she said that she hoped the franchise would empower women to be more confident in relationships and in the workplace. Do you believe after is empowering for young women? I think it is, honestly. I think Tessa is, I'm not saying that Hardin and Tessa and the romance of it is. Um, in the end, yes, but in the two movies we have, I wouldn't say that so far, but in the overall story, yes. But I mean, Tessa gets a lot of flack for being you know, weak or um, doesn't stand up for herself, but in reality, she does stand up for herself a lot and she is very strong. I mean, she goes through a lot of stuff with her mother. She goes through a lot of stuff with Hardin. She has, um, you know, without spoiling the future series, she has an addict for a parent and she has all this stuff that she deals with every day of like trying to figure out who she is while trying to live up to her mom's expectations. So it's like, I think that she is empowering. And I hope that like Dakota Johnson said that seeing more you know, sexual relationships on the screen, it won't be so taboo. And the idea, the problem I think with sexuality for women now is that it's always been from a male point of view. All of the females we see in sex movies or sex this, sex that, it's a lot of it's from a male point of view. So it's not actually empowering in the way it should be. And we should be empowered by sexuality. It shouldn't be something that's controlled by the male gaze. I mean, I say it a lot in interviews, but it's like, you know, 15 year old girls not being able to read sex books, but yet 15 year old boys can play a video game where they murder women who are barely dressed is like, there's a big disconnect here. So I think if we do better for the generations of girls coming up, sexuality and 50 shades and after and these kinds of things can be really empowering.
in the first movie, you immediately knew when you had found your heart in. Did you feel the same way about Dylan's process, Trevor? I did actually. Like the first time the idea kind of floated, I was like, it took me like less than five seconds to be like, this is actually perfect. Uh, because Trevor, for me, in the movies, we knew going in that we were going to make him a little bit different than the books because the storyline in the first movie, it just doesn't make sense that all of a sudden Zed and Tessa are like in a love triangle when they haven't really spoken at all or and like it just doesn't make sense. Um, so I knew that we would be kind of changing his character. And Dylan is so just naturally like funny and at ease and the chemistry with him and Joe, I just had a feeling would be great. In the trailer, it says that first impressions are very important. What what was going through your mind when you saw your story on the screen for the first time? Uh, I mean, it was a little backward for me because I was on set during the first one and the second one. So by the time I actually got to see it on a screen, I had been there during filming, been in the editing room. Um, but I will say watching it with a room of fans, um, in the second one, we did like a fan only screening. And it was really like, it was, a really good feeling um, not only to see their reactions and like feel the energy of them but to know that they're really happy so far the ones that have seen the second one they're all like they all love it so much so I think watching it with the fans was my kind of like moment instead of seeing it for the first time because I'd already kind of seen everything but watching it with the fans and feeling their reactions was a whole other energy I'm guessing you knew Dylan Sprouse from The Sweet Life. What was your first impression of him when you met him for the first time? Um, I, when I met him the first time, I did grow up like watching him um, on Friends and Big Daddy and um, him and his brother on Sweet Life. And then I watched the movie Banana Split, which is a romantic comedy sort of coming of age story that he did, which is really good. Um, and that made me even more sure that he would be great as Trevor. Um, and when I met him, we, we just had like this very um, strange, like immediate connection. Like it was like, oh, we've known each other for, you know, lifetimes, literally, but we haven't. Um, and he just kind of fit in seamlessly on the set. And he brought a very like, like light energy between me here and Josephine, we can be like very intense. Um, and Dylan just kind of like lightens everything up when we're all like in our heads. Uh, so he was a really good addition. And my first impression of him was like, wow, he is um, as good as, you know, he says he is. <laughs> People have very strong opinions about Hessa. How do you deal with this sort of criticism? I mean, one, I'm kind of just glad that I have something that is starting conversations, even if it's, you know, the negative side of it. Um, the thing that I think that's been the most confusing to me and for the movie side of it is when people take it to like extremes with the cast, that's the part that like bothers me. But the actual Hessa and the controversy around it, it's like, I'd rather be starting conversations and having people feel so strongly. I've never met anyone who's like, after is all right, it's either I love it or I hate it. Um, and for me, I'd rather be that. I'd rather evoke like intense emotion than just be like, nah, it was okay. Um, so I don't mind the conversations around Hessa, honestly. Again, it's the same thing though. It's like, if you haven't read the books and you're just seeing something on Twitter, like especially with Twitter, it's such a place where like someone says something and immediately it just, everybody believes it and they don't do their own research. So when the conversations are from a bunch of people who don't even know what they're talking about. It's frustrating, but I've been a lot better this year at like just putting myself back. And I used to like every fan comment I would read and make sure they're all happy. And it's like, I can't be, I can't be responsible for that many people's happiness. So I just kind of backed away and to protect myself, but um, I'm glad that people are having conversations about them. Why do you think people are so invested in their relationship? I think because it's one, it's a very long uh, saga. So you literally get like every thought they have in their day-to-day -day life. Like the entire series, aside from the end, of course, um, where it skips time is all in like nine months. 
So in a lot of romances, if it's like a year time, it'll be like this big and mine is just enormous. And I think the ups and the downs and when you finally think they're going to be happy and then another plot twist comes. So I think it's like the excitement of the plot twist um, is what the fans tell me at least. Um, for me, writing it, that was the reason why I couldn't stop was because I'm like, what is going to happen next? So I'm assuming that it has something to do with that when it comes to reading it. I remember I used to read fan fictions because I didn't want the stories that I was reading to end. What do you think is so great about fan fiction? I think that what you just said is, I have said that before too, of like with Twilight, I read so much Twilight fan fiction. Harry Potter, I've read Harry Potter fan fiction. Um, Twilight fan fiction was probably the one I really like read the most of. Um, Ironically, I never read Fifty Shades as a fan fiction somehow. I didn't even know it existed. I wish I did, but um, I think fan fiction, it just allows you to live in that world a little bit longer. Even if it's not, you know, a real person fan fiction or based on a book or whatever it is, it's like, it just gives you a little bit more time with this thing that you love if you're not getting it from the actual source of the thing. In the first movie, there were a lot less erotic scenes than in your original fan fiction, and that is not the case for the second movie. What else can fans expect from the sequel? Uh, drama, a lot of drama, um, a lot of ups and downs. There's some more comedy than they would expect to lighten up the heaviness of the subjects. Um, there's... I'm trying to think without spoiling. It's just a lot of drama. Like there's so much uh, drama. And funny enough, there's actually the same sort of, almost the same amount of intimate scenes. They're just done in a very different way than they were in the first one. So it feels a lot more um, like you're in the room with them. And last time it was very soft because it was PG-13. And this time it's a lot more obvious <laughs> of what's happening. Okay, thank you so much for wrapping me up. It was nice talking to you. Nice Bye. To you. Bye.